All right, this is your last lecture for chapter one. It's 1.4, calculating, estimating, and reading graphs. For um, number one, you're just asked to use your calculator to find the answer. So some of you might not be that comfortable with your calculator yet. So I'm going to pull up the TI here and uh, see if I can make it a little smaller. Okay, make this a little bigger. Alright, so for the first one we're doing uh, 2.8 times 3.2 minus 1.1. So you want to start, even though you're having the calculator do the work for you, you still have to follow order of operations and do inside parentheses first, hit enter, and then we can multiply by 2.8. So that turns out to be 5.88. The next one is cube root, which you can find on your math button, number four. It's a cube root. And we're going to put 700.227072 and hit enter. That one is 8.88. Alright, the next one we want to add the top, so 12.3 plus 18.276. Hit enter on that one, and then you divide by parentheses 3 times 1.04. 1 1 now if you don't have the parentheses there, it's going to give you a wrong answer. It's going to divide by 3 and then multiply everything by 1.04. So you get 9.8 here. 2 pi, there's actually a pi button. It's second. And then the caret key here. Divided by second x squared for square root 3. And this one is 3.627 598 It says to write down all the numbers calculator displays. Okay, good. Now, um, just so you know, if you hit second and um, the enter button and you keep doing that, we can go back to say this one and say you made a mistake then you can use the back arrow here and change this to maybe a minus if you had the wrong sign then hit enter. Another thing you can do is um, if you wanted to take um, this number and well you wanted to take maybe like 7.2 times 5 and then you wanted to add the, the last answer we just had you can do second the negative key and it'll bring it in there for you. So second negative and second enter are buttons I use all the time. And then math number one and then enter will turn any decimal into a fraction for you. So that's a little bit of calculator stuff but if you need any other help with it just um, post the discussion and I will make a video for you. Alright, back here it asks us to um, find all of these squares. So 5 squared, 25 squared, 35 squared, 45 squared, and so on and so forth. And we want to look for a pattern and be able to predict what 95 squared is. So it's 25 
and then 225, 625, 1225, 2025, 3025, 4225, and 5625. Oops, what did I? Oh, I skipped 15. Sugar. All right. Oops. <laughs> no, I want to delete this. Yeah, we'll just delete the whole thing. All right, so five squared, fifteen squared. 25 squared, 45 squared. Right, let me put it equal. Okay, there we go. 45 squared, 65. 75. Alright, now we get 85. Which is 72.25. Alright, so if you look at this list, you might notice that every single one of them ends in a 25. So you might guess that the last two digits in 95 squared is 25. And in fact, you can put 95 squared in your calculator and see what it is. But that's not the point. The point is to find the pattern. And um, so it's going up. It goes from, if we, if we ignore the 25 now and just look at the other digits, um, it would be 0, 2, let's write them down actually, 0, 2, 6, 12, 20, 30, 42, 56, and 72. And we've seen a pattern like this before where um, you're adding something to the previous term to get the next term, but that something is going up each time. So in between um, these two is, is 2, and then we get 4, and then 6, and then 8, and 10, and 12, and 14, and 16. So we would predict that the next one would be 18. So it would be 72 plus 18, which is 90. So it would be 90, 25. And you can verify in the calculator that that's correct. Alright, this one, um, if you put all this in your calculator correctly, it is 5, 3, 0, 4, 5. And it tells you to turn your calculator upside down and read the word. So I'm going to leave that for another uh, bonus opportunity. Um, send your answer privately to me in email, and if you get it right, be some extra credit for you. All right, number uh, four says that a sliding drawer um, contains or holds 20 um, VCR tapes. <laughs> In other words, and if Chris wants his house collection, wants to house his collection of a 408 Disney videotapes, um, then how much, how many such drawers will he need? So, you know, if you divide 408 by 20, you get 20 and some change, um, but 20 is not going to be enough to hold all of them, so he's going to need 21. Um, 
sliding drawers. Here is a graph um, showing the number of women in mathematics or computer science professions during the past three decades. And we have to answer some questions about it. It says, in what decade or 10-year period did the percent of women in math or computer science professions decrease? So looking at the graph, we can see that that's happening between 1990 and 2000. When did the percent of women in math or computer science professions reach a ma maximum? So that would be right here in 1990, where it's the highest. And then it says, in what year was the percent of women in math or computer science professions about 27%? So 27 is about right here. If we go over to the graph and then look down, we see that that's in about 1980. And I believe that's everything for this chapter.